In this class I want to talk about the promotion mix. Promotion is an important element within the marketing mix. It focuses on communicating products and services to customers. So it's a way in which customers are contacted and made aware of products and services that are available. And these products and services satisfy customers needs, customers wants. The aim of promotion is to create awareness of products and services. It emphasizes product quality and features and attempts to gain a competitive advantage. So it's communicating the product quality, the attributes of the, the product, the desirability of the product, in the context of the needs and requirements of the customer. And of course by doing this it will promote itself, the business will promote itself, it will promote the product, it will create some sort of brand loyalty and thereby gain a, um, a competitive advantage uh, as well in the marketplace. Promotion includes advertising, personal selling, sales promotion and public relations. And I want to talk about each of these in turn, just a little about each of them. We start with personal selling. Personal selling aims to manage customer relations. It's, it's a one-to-one -one service. It involves selling a product or service to a customer face-to-face. -face. So it's a human being facing a human being. There is no technology or there is no gap between the two individuals. It's personal selling, it's one-to-one. -one. Now there are refinements on this. It may be telesales, in which case it's not exactly face-to-face. -face. It may be over, over a distance or it could be some sort of computer interface but essentially it's a human being dealing with another human being. So we say face to face because that is the expression we use. But it may be, it could be um, a transaction conducted over the telephone. The idea is, however, that it's more personalised. The, the buyer may ask questions in an open sense, in a, in a free sense, open uh, ask questions and the salesperson is assumed to be knowledgeable and capable of answering the questions and allaying any fears or concerns that the purchaser may have about the product. So the salesperson should be well trained, should know about the product and be able to empathize with the the buyer, understand the buyer's requirements and link the product to the satisfaction of those requirements. When we buy a vehicle, buy a car let's say, we go to the showroom, uh, it's for the salesperson to try to determine what do we want, what sort of car do we want, what size engine, what shape, what colour and try to match our requirements with a car or a vehicle uh, and in that way satisfy our requirements. Now this happens a lot, it happens with home improvements if you're buying a kitchen or a bathroom or a bedroom. So it happens whenever we uh, engage in buying and we deal with a person. We're not dealing with a piece of technology, we're not dealing with something something remotely. We're dealing with a personalised experience. It could be that the salespeople are trained to persuade retailers to stock their products. Um, companies want to have a wide variety of outlets for their product, so they may wish to place their product, if it's suitable, within a retail outlet. But this means persuading the retailers to stock the product and 
to position the product so that it has, it has a prominent position within the, let's say, within the shop. So salespeople will deal with the retailers. It's personalised. They are trying to persuade the retailers to stock the product and stock it in a particular way. Now, sales promotion. Well, sales promotion is a way in which companies try to increase short-term sales. A promotion may last for a week or a couple of weeks. So, a sales promotion is trying to increase short-term sales. Sales promotion is a form of promotion that encourages customers to buy. It's it's a a bundle of ways, a bundle of of ideas about sales that may be deployed to try and promote sales in that period. It, it, it's this bundle which we want to talk about uh, a bit more fully, but essentially it bubbles down to uh, giving vouchers or discounts or uh, making the product more attractive in the short run. And there's a whole variety of these ways in which uh, the seller may may try to promote the product. For example, buy one get one free. Uh, bug off, as it's sometimes referred to. Buy one get one free. So in this case, the customer buys one, but actually gets two. And that may be a good idea for the seller because now the buyer has two products so it will last a longer time and the the buyer will become familiar with the product and get to like the product because it's got a, a more exposure to the product so that when when it runs out and they have to find a replacement they may go back and buy the same product again because they're familiar with it they've had two in the past but it could also be vouchers or sales discounts or free accessories. If you buy a watch they may give you the the case for the watch free. It could be a money off promotion. Uh, buy the product and we'll give you 10% off. Or it could be buy the product and we'll give you some vouchers. The next time you go shopping for the product you'll have 10% off as well. So sales promotion is in the short run and it's, a, if you like, a collection of ways in which the, the seller may promote the product. When establishing sales promotion, an organization needs to consult their financial position. It's imperative that the company can afford the sales promotion. Um, businesses exist because they make a profit, because they cover costs and make, make some profit. If the sales promotion is very expensive, it may cause financial problems for the business. It may even ruin the business. So it's important that the uh, the cost of the sales promotion is factored in. It's understood by the business and that it's assessed to bring about long-term benefits to the business, not just short-term increases in sales, but long-term um, sales for the business. Public relations. Well, it's important that the organization needs to manage public relations. It needs to be seen as a good business, an ethical business, one that looks after its workers, one that looks after the community and looks after the environment. Um, it must promote a positive image of itself so as to enhance its reputation in the marketplace. The aim in marketing is keeping customers satisfied. This helps to build a strong brand image. So keeping customers satisfied is important because the brand image is is strengthened, it's developed and strengthened as a consequence of the good reputation the business has in the community, in the economy, 
uh, it, it's important that the business is seen to reflect the values of the society in which it's it's placed. A strong brand image builds customer loyalty. It also builds trust and promotes a strong relationship between the organization and customers. So the brand image is important. Uh, the brand should mean something. Customers should relate to it almost instantaneously. They should understand that is the brand. And the brand represents something. It represents good quality, good value for money. It represents a good business working in the interests of the community and its own employees and and the country in general because it's exporting perhaps. So the brand image is important and press releases, company literature, videos, company websites, they can all be used to promote the public relations side of the business. Uh, the, there are many channels that the, the, the company may want to use to promote itself and promote its public uh, image, the image it wants to project. So it may use press releases in the national newspapers or on television, on the radio. It may use videos. It may use the company website. So there are a whole variety of techniques it may use. Direct mail, well, slightly more uh, controversial. It uses a database of customer details, uh, of customer preferences, to target a specific group. Now, there are all sorts of issues about holding a database of uh, information about people. Ethical issues. Is it right that it should happen? Uh, what sort of information should be stored? How long should it be kept? Should it be sold on to other companies? Um, there are all sorts of issues associated with the use of databases. But if a database exists, of course it may be categorized by gender, by age, by location, by buying preferences. Um, but people may resent being predictable in this way and being used in this way and being targeted because of their, their buying patterns have been worked out. It's controversial because a lot of shopping nowadays is, takes place online and when customers click online um, patterns may emerge. Patterns in databases may emerge so that um, the next time they log online similar products are presented for them to consider or they are channeled towards particular products and particular lifestyles and many may wonder how can it be that the computer knows that they are interested in certain things well, it's because the database has been interrogated the database holds information about them and the more they shop online or the more information is collected about them um, the more refined that information will be and the more they will be channeled in particular ways. As I said it's a controversial area it's one where legislators and all sorts of people are starting to think about the implications of this type of um, activity of course, it may be that mail is sent to customers and then marketers monitor any response. This may backfire, of course, uh, on the people sending the mail, sending the, the letters, because the letters may be seen as uh, junk letters. They may be seen as wasteful, wasting the world's resources, printing paper, knocking down trees, um, wasting energy, wasting uh, effort and unwanted by the recipients. So direct mail may be counterproductive. 
Um, it could be that simply using a student database uh, to market a product. But again, as I said, students may resent their information being stored on a database. And what happens 10 years from now? Will the information still be stored about them? Is that fair? Um, so, as I said, it's controversial. It's, it's an area that needs to be looked at and looked at carefully by legislators and by governments and by um, consumer groups who need to be persuaded that this, and it's been used for a long time, that this form of marketing is, uh, is acceptable. Exhibitions. Well, an exhibition is simply a show, a trade show, in which uh, exhibitors all have a common interest. They're all working in a particular industry. So it may be the holiday industry. So many companies working in the holiday industry, travel companies, hotels, airlines, and so on, and they may come together and hold an exhibition. And it may be open to the public, so people who visit the exhibition will be people who are interested in holidays. Now, this is a good form of marketing, because uh, the, the people involved in the exhibition have self-selected. They are a segment that are of interest. So they are they have self-selected themselves because they are there at the exhibition. They are interested in a certain uh, type of product. And this gives organizations a chance to market their product to the target audience. So organizations know that the, the people who are at the exhibition are interested. So that's a very refined set of people and it's a very efficient way of doing some marketing. The organization may increase its own awareness in the marketplace. People may become aware of the, the business because it's there. And they may also be able to sell products and services at the event. They may be able to do some, do some selling at the event, at the exhibition. Not just promoting their name, promoting the reputation and the image of the business, but also actually doing some selling. And of course it has an opportunity to make new business contacts and to renew old contacts, ones that have gone cold over the years. Uh, there are all sorts of benefits associated with the exhibition not just selling to the, the general public who may visit the exhibition but also talking to other companies and forming alliances and forming uh, some sort of getting agreements amongst themselves to help each other to facilitate aspects of their work to streamline parts of their work it may be seen as anti-competitive but at the same time it, it may help struggling businesses to continue in business and continue to give employment to their workers. Advertising. Well, this develops a number of objectives for the organization. It obviously helps to promote the, the product and the service. So advertising is a good way of making the product or service known to the customers it creates an awareness and response from the target group. It enables the target group to become aware of the product because they see the ad advertising. It, it also helps to compete with rivals. So there is a, a, an advantage in advertising in the sense that uh, it can mean that the competitive edge that companies experience within a given industry, that edge can be fought out over advertising and leave it to the customers to decide who they like. 
It does mean, however, that perhaps companies have to spend quite a lot on uh, advertising to try to beat their rivals. But there is an element of competition involved in advertising whose advertisements are the most entertaining or whose advertisements uh, contain the information whilst at the same time not being boring. Uh, there are many issues associated with advertising that need to be taken into account. Um, it's also necessary to transmit information. Advertising is a good way of explaining the product, explaining its features, its explaining its desirability particularly if it's a technical product, if it's a if it's a computer people may wish to know how much RAM the computer's got or what sort of processor it's got. Um, just to simply say it's, it's a nice pretty computer may not be a good selling point. So information may be put out as well. It depends on the nature of the product but um, there's an element of entertainment involved in advertising uh, to stop viewers perhaps of advertisements on television becoming bored. But the, on the other hand there is some requirement to have information about the product as well. How much it costs perhaps or, or where the product may be found. Advertising is a one-way communications. The company is putting information across to the to the consumer. The consumer is not putting information back to the business. Advertising is one way. It's coming at the consumers. Advertising may be in magazines or on websites or on television or on billboards. It's coming at the consumer. It's coming from the television to the consumer. It's not going from the consumer back to the television and hence back to the advertiser. So it's a one-way form of communications. There are two types of advertising that we need to be aware of. One is called above-the-line advertising. This is where uh, the company places an advertisement, let's say, on television. And the advertisement or the uh, the little clip of video is shown to many people so it's it's one to many it's the company putting information out one to many that and this is called above the line above the line advertising is where there is quite a lot spent on the advertising it's put into uh, perhaps a glossy magazine or into a journal or into cinemas or whatever and many people can see it it's one to many. There's also what's known as below the line. Below the line is um, more direct. It's a sales promotion, it's a one-to-one, -one, it's word of mouth, it's much cheaper, it's below the line. So there are two types of advertising we must be familiar with, above the line and below the line. Now sponsorship, well this is an approach used by an organization to gain a strong brand image and customer loyalty. Sponsorship could be perhaps for some charitable event, perhaps a race or some sort of competitive event. It could be sponsorship of a sport, it could be sponsorship of snooker, let's say or horse riding or around the world yacht race. Now the benefit to the sponsor of course is that the business gets its name promoted. Every time mention of the event occurs on television or on the radio their business is mentioned as well. So currently for example Flora Mar Margarine sponsors the London Marathon. Well every time the London Marathon is mentioned it's the Flora London Marathon. 
So it's getting its name put across. It's sponsoring the event, but it's also benefiting because every time uh, anyone mentions the London Marathon, the company is also mentioned. So the process of sponsorship means the organization gives money to a person or to an event and thereby enables the event to take place. An organization usually sponsors an event that portrays their brand image, as I said, the London Marathon. Um, when we see the London Marathon on television, we see images of the product all along the race by the, the side of the roads where the race takes place and at the the end uh, where the athletes finish. So the sponsor makes the event happen by sponsoring the costs of it but at the same time gets a lot of advertising done as well. Viral marketing, well this place takes place when a consumer passes on a recommendation or comment of a product or service. This is usually word of mouth or one-to-one -one recommendations. It becomes viral, a bit like a virus. It's passed on one-to-one. -one. So if someone has a good experience of a product, they tell their friends, and their friends tell their friends, and so on. And it becomes large sales as a consequence. It's, it's viral. It happens a lot on uh, the internet. On YouTube, for example, a video may become viral. Someone likes a video, they email their friends to tell them to look at the video, their friends look ahead and like it and they tell their friends, and their friends tell their friends, and, and after a while millions of people watch the video. It becomes a viral video. It's viral uh, because it's been recommended. And viral marketing is when people recommend a product. They recommend it to their family and to their friends. They just say, we bought this product, it's really nice, we like it, perhaps you like it as well. And they, the family and friends buy it. And they like it and they recommend it to their family and friends and it spreads out so it becomes quite big sales. Um, as I said, online um, recommendations, particularly on YouTube, uh, have become very uh, important and it's, it's, uh, it's a well-known expression in the context of YouTube for videos to become viral. Now the use of the promotional mix, well marketing issues impact on the choice of the promotion method and its appropriateness. So marketing issues impact on the choice of the promotion method and appropriateness. Appropriateness lies, uh, relies on um, target market. Um, how appropriate is the choice of the promotion method in the context of the, market, of the target market? Um, if the target market is um, elderly people, senior citizens, then having a promotional method involving uh, modern, current music may not be appropriate. They don't understand the proper the, the current music or they're not interested in the current music so it's an inappropriate form of promotion. The advertisement with a lot of modern music doesn't appeal to that sector of the population. There has to be appropriateness. It's important to understand the segment that's been targeted and the requirements of the seg segment and what that segment of the population will relate to so that appropriate uh, content can be put forward. It also depends on the, the product. 
appropriateness relies on the product. Um, sometimes uh, the product may may be aimed at, um, let's say, at students. Textbooks are aimed at students, so perhaps it's um, it's not appropriate to market textbooks to people in their who are not students, who are in their late forties or fifties, who have long time given up being a student. Perhaps. So it's inappropriate. It's an inappropriate product. It's looking at the segment of the population and offering it the wrong product. It's inappropriate. The distribution has to be right as well. The distribution is how the product is delivered. Uh, someone who is not familiar with computers and wants to buy some software nowadays will have to download the software. Well, that may be difficult. Now, if the person wants the software, they're going to have to download it. They're going to have to find someone to help them, perhaps. But the distribution method is perhaps not appropriate for that uh, set of the population. Is there another way of doing it? Could it be sent on DVD? Or is the risk of piracy too much? The distribution has to be looked at. And of course, the price of the product. Um, is the price appropriate? If, um, if in, the student, in a student uh, setting, let's say students at a college want to have a, a cup of coffee and the price is very expensive. Is that appropriate for that segment of the population? Do students want to pay a lot for a cup of coffee? Can they afford to pay a lot? Is it appropriate? Is the price, has the price uh, been badly pitched for that segment of the population? So it may not be appropriate to have a certain price in that context. The target market. Well, segmentation plays a role in the way a promotion is determined. Um, clearly, having developed a product, a company must identify who its likely customers are going to be. What are their attributes? What's the age profile, the gender, the location? And try to target that part of the general population. Try to get its product to that part because it's most appropriate for them. So factors such as the size, location and type of market all emphasize the need to implement different promotion methods. Um, it's if the population live in a hot climate, let's say in the, the south of Europe, then they may have different promotional requirements. Um, if they live in the very north of Europe where it can become very cold in winter, they may have a different promotional requirement. So it's important to look at the target market and develop an appropriate strategy uh, to, to target that part. So with a product, different products and services require different prom uh, promotion methods as well. Um, cars cannot be sold in the same way as, uh, as burgers or cups of coffee. Um, cars are more sophisticated. They have different requirements. The people buying a car, it's a big expenditure. They will think long and hard before they buy a car. Whereas they may, without thinking too much, go out and buy a coffee. So the product or the service needs to be thought about more carefully. And also, we have convenience products. Uh, this is the cup of coffee I was talking about. And these require mass marketing methods. 
So McDonald's, for example, will sell coffee and sell uh, convenience food. Well, McDonald's will advertise on television, on the radio, on billboards, in magazines. They'll advertise in a mass sense. Whereas someone selling a specialist product may only advertise within specialist magazines or within a very constrained environment, a very close-knit environment. It depends on the nature of the product that's been sold. High-end luxury goods, goods that require more thought and a purchase decision uh, in, ma is, uh, in the making process, is likely to use personal selling as a promotional method. If it's a high-end luxury good, let's say a watch, a very expensive watch, we can expect to go into a very exclusive shop and get personal attention from one of the salespeople who will look for our requirements, try to determine our budget, and will try to uh, match the requirements that we have in our minds and our budget to a particular product, sell us a particular watch. It's very much a one-to-one -one experience. Whereas convenience foods, a cup of coffee, well, it's just a question of walking in and buying a cup of coffee and sitting down and drinking it. It's not very personalised. Distribution, well, selling requires two approaches. Uh, pull and push strategies. Now, pull strategies create demand by directly promoting the product to customers. So, the customers are contacted, they're made aware of the product and the, the customers are in a sense pulling the product towards themselves. The customers are aware of the product, of its desirability and they are pulling it towards themselves. It's a pull strategy. Uh, the promotion enables them to, to pull the product towards them. A push strategy promotes um, could be to intermediaries, for example, selling some product to retailers. The retailers are the intermediaries. Then the retailers try to push the product, to try to sell the product. So they are pushing the product to the customer. They're trying to make the customer aware of the product. They're pushing it. Whereas with the pull, once the, uh, the customers are aware of the product, the customers want it, they are pulling it. They are pulling it, they are buying it, they are pulling it towards themselves. With the push strategy, the company supplies, let's say, retailers, and the retailers try to push it to the customers, to make the customers aware of it and get the customers to buy it. So the, the retailers are pushing the product. So there are two strategies, push and pull. With the, the price, well, the type of product and the price element determines the promotion method. Um, if it's a very expensive product, then the promotion method will be more personalised, as in the case of the watch I mentioned earlier. If, if it's a very cheap product, a cup of coffee, then it's more mass marketing. So the, the fight may be between Burger King and uh, McDonald's as to where you go for your coffee. So there will be an advertising campaign by each to try and make their product desirable, um, but it's it's a cheap product. With the um, an expensive product, it's much more one to one. So expensive luxury products require a more personalised approach to selling. Lower priced daily essentials rely on mass marketing. So a cup of coffee, that's mass marketing. Just relying on advertising. Luxury products, more personalised. Go to the shop, uh, a sales attendant will deal with your concerns and issues and try to determine your budget and give you a much more personalised experience. These are the issues that uh, I wanted to 
discussed in the context of a promotion mix. There are other videos that will look at these parts in much more detail and these will be made available in the coming classes. So that's all I'm going to do on this topic. I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.